Before we begin this video, I wanted to invite you to follow us on our Facebook page Hurricane Info, where we'll be sharing information and updates on tropical cyclones throughout the hurricane season. We also have an Instagram page, you can find us there as Info Hurricane, and you can follow us to stay informed. Thank you all very much for your support. A warm greeting. Today is Sunday, June 1, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. Today officially marks the beginning of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. In today's video, I'd like to talk about what we can expect over the next two weeks, and we'll go into detail about two areas we'll be monitoring where we could potentially see the development of some low-pressure systems. The important thing is that, for now, the Atlantic is quiet, and we don't have any areas with potential for tropical cyclone development. Currently, there are high concentrations of Saharan dust moving across the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean, which represents a major hindrance to cyclone development. Also, remember that historically, the month of June tends to be rather inactive, although sometimes there are exceptions, like last year when we saw the formation of powerful Hurricane Barrel, which moved through the Caribbean Sea. However, that was an isolated event and it's very unlikely to repeat this year. Let's now give an update on sea surface temperature anomalies. First, remember that in the El Niño 3.4 region of the Pacific, ENSO neutral conditions continue. These are likely to persist for the rest of the season which means we can expect more favorable conditions for an above-average hurricane season. In addition, much of the subtropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Western Atlantic remain with sea surface temperatures above normal, which is the other main reason why expert groups all agree that this hurricane season should be more active than normal. But at least the good news is that, in the main development region, MDR, for tropical cyclones, although sea surface temperatures are still above average, they are significantly cooler compared to what was recorded last year. So even though this hurricane season is expected to be more active than normal, it's not anticipated to be as active as what we saw in 2024. Now let's look at the following image, which shows us the tracks of different cyclones that have formed during the month of June. You can see that the regions where we typically see tropical cyclone formation and movement during this month are concentrated in the Western Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, and the waters east and southeast of the United States. Although, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we sometimes see cyclones form in the tropical Atlantic or the Caribbean Sea. This is extremely rare. That's why climatology tells us that these are the areas we should be monitoring during the month of June. In fact, these same areas currently have the warmest sea surface temperature anomalies across the Atlantic, with some regions north of the Bahamas, east of Florida, and in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico showing temperatures between 1 to 2 degrees Celsius above normal. This could lead to the early season development of a tropical storm. Interestingly, this morning's global model runs show the potential development of a low-pressure system off the southeastern U.S., associated with the remnants of a cold front currently moving through the Atlantic. For example, the American GFS model shows a low developing east of Jacksonville sometime between Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And while it does not currently develop a tropical cyclone, we will be monitoring the area closely since sea surface temperatures are warmer than normal across this region. In addition, Notice that the European model also develops a low-pressure system southeast of South Carolina. The German model also shows low development south and southeast of North Carolina. So we'll be watching for any low-pressure system that may form in association with the remnants of this cold front. At least the good news is that the global models currently keep this low fairly weak, but we definitely cannot rule out the formation of a low-pressure system with some potential for tropical development. Now, the most important changes in the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico may arrive in about 10 to 14 days, as a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, MJO, is expected to move through the Pacific. By the second week of June, this phase will be setting up over parts of the Western Caribbean and Central America, where a Central American gyre is likely to develop. If this happens, as shown in green and blue on this image, conditions could become more favorable for tropical development, particularly in the Eastern Pacific, but also in the southern Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean. Sometimes, we even see cyclones forming both in the Pacific and in the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico simultaneously. So another key area to watch during the second week of June is this region, which has been highlighted by NOAA's Climate Prediction Center. They indicate there is more than a 20% chance of development in the southern Gulf of Mexico or the Western Caribbean. This forecast is for the period from June 11th to June 17th. While development is possible in both the Atlantic and Pacific basins, it's the Pacific side that currently holds the higher probabilities, over 40% according to the Climate Prediction Center. Over the past few days, we've also seen a lot of news about the American model developing a tropical storm and hurricane for next week in the Western Caribbean Sea. However, it's important to point out that this is the only model showing tropical development, so this projection really shouldn't be a cause for concern, 
especially since we know that the American model tends to generate what we call phantom cyclones early in the season, particularly in the southwestern and western Caribbean. So, don't be alarmed by the latest model runs from the American model. Remember that in May, it also showed the development of a hurricane, and that system never materialized. If we look specifically at the data from last year, take a look at this graphic showing all the places where the American model forecasted tropical cyclone development. The circles represent areas where a tropical cyclone did form as forecasted, while the X's mark areas where the American model predicted development, but nothing ever happened. You'll see that, as is typical, the American model had many false alarms in the western and southwestern Caribbean last year. Most of these projected developments never came to be, that's why we place low confidence in this particular projection. And as long as it's the only model showing development, there's really no reason to worry. Now, everything changes if other models begin to show the same scenario. For example, the European model was much more accurate last year in forecasting cyclones in the Western Caribbean. Almost every time it showed development, it actually happened. So, in summary, we'll be monitoring two areas in the Atlantic over the next two weeks, although chances of development in both remain very low at this time. That matches what we're seeing from the ensemble members of the American model. Some of them are showing a weak low-pressure system off the southeastern U.S. by the end of this week, but none of them develop a tropical cyclone. And while a few ensemble members show a tropical storm forming in the Western Caribbean, it's very likely that development won't happen, especially since none of the European model's ensemble members show development in that area. However, take note that the strongest signal right now is in the Eastern Pacific. Well, that's all for this video. I hope everyone is prepared for this hurricane season. Remember that it only takes one hurricane to cause major damage where you live, so it's important that we all stay prepared, no matter how much or how little activity is expected in 2025. Here at Hurricane Info, we'll be watching the Western Caribbean and the Southeastern U.S. closely. If necessary, we'll record additional videos to keep you updated. To support the channel and make sure you don't miss any of those updates, I invite you to like this video. Also, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you'll know when we post new videos. Alright, that's all for now. Until the next video, take care.